My husband and I will be celebrating our 19th anniversary this month. 19 short and happy years. However, there was a period where we were separated. And I'd like to talk to you about that today with one day in particular that we call Dark Tuesday. It happened in the French Alps. We were on an adventurous bike vacation touring, following the Tour de France. And there were 16 people in the trip. And each day, we would get on our bikes and do the route that the cyclists would race that day. And then we would just stand there and watch them whiz by. It was a lot of fun. That, the year that we did it, Lance Armstrong was going for the record of the most wins. And we were rooting for him and the US Postal Service team. Of course, that was before we knew that he cheated. Speaking of shady characters, the <laughs> night before Dark Tuesday, we had dinner, and then a bunch of us went to this quaint little bar and ordered some beers and were chatting. And then the bartender started playing some 70s music, and so some of us started to dance. Now, I have to tell you, Greg is quite the dancer. Greg's my husband, by the way. And by the time a few songs had gone by, he had the whole bar dancing. Even a few couples, French couples, that we didn't even know. <laughs> and somehow or another, we all started dancing together. And then we were doing the conga line. <laughs> and then this French guy pushed Greg down on a chair and started spanking his bottom. <laughs> if you could have seen his face, it was so priceless. <laughs> I still laugh about it. Anyway, as soon as the song was done, he grabbed my arm and said, time to go. So we raced out of the bar and into the rain. And I should have known that that was a forecast of what was to come. Dark Tuesday started innocently enough. We got on the bus and went 40, about 40 kilometers up the road to the base of Alpe d'Huez. Are any of you familiar with Alpe d'Huez? Yes, it is one of the iconic mountains for the tour. And it's considered a HC, which is a category, a beyond category climb. And it has 21 switchbacks, and it goes up to about 11,000 feet. So it's quite a climb. We started the bike ride, and after we got about a third of the way, I told Greg, you know, you go on up ahead, I'll catch you at the top. So he and Robin, our tour guide, took off, and I settled into my own pace. Well, about two miles up to the finish line, they started closing the road down because the race was going to start. And there were over a million people on the switchbacks. It, it was crazy. But we had to get off of our bikes. So I got off my bike, but it was so jam-packed, I had nowhere to go. I was stuck there. And the same thing happened to Greg and Robin. But they were almost at the finish line. And it just so happened that Greg saw the finish line and decided to go for it. And so a policeman clotheslined him. <laughs> he did get off his bike. But they were stuck up there. And I noticed that there were these Italian cyclists where I was, and they started going down the side of the mountain. So I figured they knew where they were going, and <laughs> I decided to follow them. And it was a little hairy carrying my bike and you know maneuvering on the edge of the mountain. But I followed, and we ended up on the back side, and there were empty roads that were open. So we, I followed them all the way down, and I ended up back where the bus had dropped us off. I knew it was going to be a long day and that Greg and Robin were stuck up on top of the mountain. At least I assumed that. So I decided to ride back to the hotel and shower, get comfortable. And I did that. And when I got to the hotel, I left a message with one of the guides to tell Robin that I was at the hotel. It was back in a time where the internet or the international service 
for our cell phones was not good. In fact, Greg and I didn't even bring our cell phones. But I knew that Robin had his, and he could relay the message to Greg. Well, that's when it all started to unravel. Because Robin's cell phone battery had died, so he never got the message. And when the race was over, and they had come down the mountain and wanted to get onto the bus, Greg refused to get on, because he was certain that I was somewhere up on that mountain. Well, there was this one nice man named Art who decided to stay with Greg, and the rest of the group came back to the hotel. And the bad news is, there was no way we could get a message to Greg that that's where I was. So, Robin made arrangements for them to stay another night and then catch a train to meet us at the end of the day at our other destination. But he really wanted to get going on the road because we had a three hour drive to the next hotel. I wanted to stay, but they were adamant that I'd go with the group. So off we went. Poor Greg and Art didn't get to the hotel until 10 o'clock that night after the last bus. Talk about fortitude. <laughs> he was relieved that I was okay, but he was pretty upset that I took the luggage and he had to stay in his sweaty bike clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the next day we were reunited and I didn't even mind that he was smelly when I hugged him. It was okay. We shared our separate experiences of the day and I have to say, on his side, there was a lot of lightning and thunder when we discussed Dark Tuesday. But there is a silver lining. On our anniversary that year, he made me a homemade card. And it was a picture of him. And on the inside, he wrote, I would have waited for you forever. Aww. Here he is in his stinky bike outfit. <laughs> so next time, we're going to go with our cell phones, but it won't be on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>